YouTube, Science Fiction Reads here with a quick um, recently read and book haul. So launching right in, I did manage to finish quite a while ago now, A Deepness in the Sky by Verna Vinci, the sequel to A Fire Upon the Deep, which I read recently and it just became my favorite SF novel. Absolutely loved it. This was good too. Um, just a little longer than I would have liked. Um, and some of the military SF elements I wasn't totally into, but still really good. I liked getting some backstory on Pham Nguyen, one of the main characters from uh, the first book. So that was good. After that, I couldn't decide what to read and I just grabbed Earth Abides by George R. Stewart off the shelf. And it took me by surprise. I absolutely loved this end of the world novel from um, 1949, this was published. And it was really good. You don't really, I don't think you're really meant to really sympathize with, well, maybe sympathize with, but the main character is not somebody that everybody likes. I didn't mind him. Um, actually, I really felt for his efforts to uh, kind of keep the old ways going and keep the knowledge um, alive with uh, the next generation of uh, humanity that doesn't really know anything about uh, our culture. And uh, it didn't end how I thought. It was not what I expected. I really liked how certain things didn't come to be. Uh, very sad, too. Uh, an ending I will not soon forget. After that, I read something crazily different. Nebula Maker by Olaf Stapleton. This is like stuff that was cut from his uh, Star Maker, which is the only other Olaf Stapleton I've uh, read. I actually started reading Last and First Men and just couldn't get into it, but I still wanted to read Stapleton, so I grabbed this. And this is really like just one large segment. I could see where this could have fit in with Star Maker, but it really became its own thing. I think this was published posthumously because um, it's really just like a tiny unfinished novella about, um, written in the 30s, uh, and about uh, nebulas and if they were sentient and uh, the type of culture and uh, intelligence they might have. Totally wild, especially considering when it was written. Uh, much like Star Maker, I really enjoyed this, but not quite as much. I think I gave this a four out of five. Uh, Star Maker still um, much better. But this does have some unforgettable, uh, really neat characters, even though it's super short. Probably not easy to find a copy of that. And then um, after that, I read a version by Alistair Reynolds, uh, my favorite SF author. Uh, and this took me by surprise. I really, really liked this, which I know it's funny to say it took me by surprise, but it's my favorite author, but uh, his earlier stuff has always been my favorite. So every time something new comes out, I enjoy it, but I'm always like, mm, it's not as good as the old stuff. But this was, this was quite short, um, 300 pages. I mean, when you have the trade paperback is quite large, but the text. Uh, so it didn't take long to read, and it's about, um, uh, I don't want to give too much away, it's about a doctor on a ship um, in multiple timelines, or is it? And he starts to uh, realize he's been on this journey, the, uh, the crew on this sailing ship, sometimes it's a sailing ship, are uh, looking for something. Uh, far away from civilization, and um, it's basically the same story taking part in different different parts in history. And this guy starts to realize, I've already done this. I've I've been on this adventure before, uh, and I could start to see um, correctly guessed a couple things uh, where it was all going to end up, uh, what was actually happening. But the way he plays with Anytime Reynolds writes about consciousness and memory, like especially in um, oh, Chasm City, it would be the best example of that. But also in um, Century Rain too, there's some good stuff. I really like when he plays with memory and this is really all about um, the main character and his memory and consciousness. Really good. I didn't expect to love it as much as I uh, did. So that's what I've read. I don't know what I'm gonna read next. Possibly this that just arrived today, uh, The Whitling by Verna Vinge. I got a couple books in the mail today. This is one of his early, early books. Um, not his first, because his first was uh, Grimm's World or something. Um, this was published 76. 
Dodd Books always has, well not always, but they often have really cool illustrations inside. I don't know much about it other than um, two scientists or um, explorers of some sort end up on this world with a vastly different culture, um, get into some shenanigans or something. Uh, since I enjoyed A Fire Upon the Deep so much, and I wanted to buy more of Verna Vinci's books, I bought a couple, but I didn't read much about the synopsis because I'd like to just go in mostly blind. Great cover art too, always is, with Da. Um, also that came with that, another uh, Brian Stableford, Journey to the Center. I forget how many books are in this series. Can't even remember the name of the series. I kind of just grabbed this because um, I was already buying some stuff from um, the seller online on Ape Books. And this is a Da Stableford I don't have. And every time I get one, I say I've, I've got almost all of them. So again, almost all of them at this point. Uh, the Rune Staff by Moorcock. I just keep grabbing Moorcock paperbacks. Uh, these next two came from an online auction run by uh, Matt at Book Build. Uh, I won these a while back. Um, Man Plus by Frederick Pohl, a classic. I did start reading this. I read the first 50 pages and then I just wasn't in the mood. Um, that's when I randomly grabbed Aversion by Reynolds and absolutely loved it. So I'll probably get back to that next maybe. Um, and The Martian Inca by Ian Watson, which is not something I'd ever heard of, but I just thought with the South America elements, I might be into this if they even feature heavily. Um, this is about a Soviet era uh, satellite that I think was sampling Mars, got some soil samples, came back to Earth, went off course and crashed um, in South America and a virus infects um, a native uh, population there. Okay, up next, here's a Heinlein hardcover, a classic half space suit will travel. Um, this, I think, is from the 70s. It doesn't actually say this edition, that is. Uh, this was published in 58, but I believe this edition was sometime in the 70s uh, by Scribner's Hudson River Editions. Uh, I grabbed it because I figured it would probably sell on eBay, to be honest, because I might actually already have a paperback of this. A uh, random copy of Treasure Island. I already have a copy, but this one's super nice. It's a little hardcover, and it cost me $2. Okay, um, these I showed off in a picture on my community page a while back. The Elric Saga, part one. These are by, the first two at least, are by Nelson Doubleday. So the first has Elric of Melnibinone, Nel, Melnibinone, I think I got that right. Uh, the Sailor on the Seas of Fate and The Weird of the White Wolf. So it's the first three in the Elric Saga. But when was this published? It doesn't actually say. Hold up. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say. I think these are from the 80s. Um, and they're super nice. Let's go through the other game quick. Super nice, but they t they sell for a decent price online. And I mean, I have most of these books in paperback. So I'm thinking I might sell these to fund further book purchasing. And they're in like mint condition, which is awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, one to go. I've been waiting for this for so long. Um, as soon as I read it, I went and bought a first edition, which was kind of mildly difficult to track down. And then it took forever to arrive. This is first edition of A Fire Upon the Deep by Verna Vinge. I could not resist buying this. This one really is, as described online, it even feels like it's never been opened. The jacket's perfect. I'm gonna put it in a Brodart dust jacket, probably right after this video. Um, yeah, this book blew me away. Couldn't believe I had tried and DNF'd it twice in the past. So beautiful. I'm not actually sure if that's a 
the ship, the main spacecraft from the story, or if it's just random art by Boris Vallejo. I don't know if it's... Well, he signed at 91, and this was from 92, so maybe he did make that purposely for uh, the cover of this. I'm going to wrap that in a Brodart dust jacket after this, and just admire that amazing cover art. Um, yeah, that rounds it out for this video. Um, as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.